Hello everybody, my name is Adam Kidd and I am the FX Kid and today we're going to do some cool tricks. Uh, in this special we're going to do an Instagram dazzle wall. What is an Instagram dazzle wall? Well, it's something I invented, but it's really cool. So uh, what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to scrape images from Instagram. Uh, we are going to develop a hair system that will broadcast those images in a particular manner. And then we're going to dazzle and render so uh, what we want to do is sort of create what we see in this image here from this Tom Green poster. And that is we want to take all these photographs and sort of uniformly display them uh, and point out that all the images are actually different. Uh, well, there might be some duplicates in there, but bottom line, uh, it's, uh, it's a really cool effect. And if you want to do it in something like Photoshop or GIMP or any other image manipulation software, the process to do it takes forever. And when you're done, you can't really customize it to make it, um, you know, another uh, group of images. So uh, Blender is going to be very beneficial for that. And what we are going to do is basically create um, the wall of photos that looks just like this. And uh, we're going to scrape my friend Casey's profile because she's got a lot of pictures. She's got more than enough to do what we need to do. So let's open up Blender and get started. And uh, if you are new to Blender or you're not familiar with how we do our settings um, on this channel, uh, the first thing we want to do is make sure we go to our file user preferences, and I like to make sure I select with the left mouse button. After that, what I want to do is make sure that under add-ons, we go to uh, import export, and we make sure that we have import images as planes selected. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to take um, picture files and bring them in already uh, textured on planes and everything. Uh, and when you're done there, you can save your user settings. And uh, now we are ready to get started. Um, under dimensions, on the right-hand side, I'm going to bump it up all the way to the top. So it's 100% resolution. And I'm fine with the HD settings there. That's the, the standard um, dimensions for uh, an HD video frame. Um, the next thing we want to do is adjust our world settings because if we were to render right now what we would get is this gray background and you can make it so it doesn't render the background but for this i actually do want a background so i'm going to go into the world and change the horizon so that it's all black and so when i render i get an all black background and the next thing I want to do is under my render settings, I want to scroll all the way to the bottom and under post perform or post processing, I'm going to check edge. I'm going to set the threshold to one. And I'm going to change the color to white. So when I render this out, It'll put this cool little um, border around the image. Now we can do this in the compositor, but this is a simple enough tutorial, so we're going to use that edge render. Uh, so far, what we have done here is set it up so it's going to render a black background and it's going to render that edge. It's the exact opposite of what we have in this image here where we do black border, white background. But considering oh, what we're doing here with these pictures, I think it works a little bit better. Uh, however, you are free to change the colors to whatever you want. So the next thing we need to do is get some images. And to get those images, we're going to go uh, to a source, a great source, a source that can provide us a whole bunch of images that are perfectly square. Why square? Well, I kind of like square images. They're uniform. They're the same sideways as they are um, up and down and uh, it kind of it kind of works so um, where can we get square images well um, 
if you have a friend who uses Instagram, you ask them. You say, hey, can I can I raid your Instagram profile? And I'm going to do that for my friend Casey. Um, and uh, while we're here, uh, Casey's Photo Pass, and this is at Instagram.com. Go ahead and follow her because she releases some really good pictures, mostly a lot of stuff at um, concerts. Um, but um, basically, we want to load our entire page. And you'll see a little button there that says Load More. You only have to click that once, and now every time you scroll down, it'll just keep automatically reloading. And you basically want to load until you can't load anymore. Um, so basically to the beginning of our account. Now if you're using a friend's Instagram profile, that is cool. Uh, in a little while I'll show you how to customize this so you can actually change it from her images to someone else's. And we'll, uh, for that we'll raid my personal Instagram profile, which I don't really follow. Um, I don't recommend you follow that one too much because it's just boring, you know, pictures of my kids and stuff like that. So anyway, we're still going. <laughs> and what we'll want to do once we get all this loaded up is we're going to save the page. And when we save the page, we're going to make sure we save an entire website. So right click, uh, save as, and it's going to give us a folder or an, an opportunity to save it. And we want to make sure it's a complete web page. Hit save. All right, I've already done it. so. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll replace the images and what it's going to do is it's basically going to download all of these uh, little pictures here um, in a resolution that it's not the world's greatest, but it'll do for what we want it to do. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pleased with that. Um, then what we want to be able to do is just sort of sort through them and I'm only going to pick pictures that I think are going to apply to this dazzle wall so uh, she's taken some more fun personal pictures uh, or, or done some screenshots um, they don't exactly apply to all the the, uh, the other photography so I might not pick those and basically uh, so basically what we'll want to do is go in find the pictures and just you know Control-click, control-click, pick all the ones you think you're going to want to use in the profile and copy those to a new folder. And uh, that way we just don't have to filter through them again and again. So once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and import some of these pictures. And uh, the reason we want to do that, of course, is we need to tell Blender that it's going to work with Casey's pictures. So let's delete, let's delete the default cube and go file, import, images as planes. And remember, if you haven't already uh, enabled images as planes, do so in the properties. And then uh, want to find Casey's pictures. All right, press A once and I'll select all of them. And we're going to get an option down below for material settings. We want to set that to shadeless. And once you're done, just go ahead and import the images. And step back while it's doing that. Depending on your computer, um, it might take a while. And if you click around too much, it could crash it. So uh, there's the planes. They've all come in. And uh, if I was to go to material settings, all right, and this one might crash again too. What it will do is it will take all of these planes and perfectly lay out the image for us. And it's done most of the dirty work for us. Press M to move it to the back layer. And then when we go there, we're going to press Control G. That's going to give us an option to create a group for all of these to belong to. And we're going to call that Casey's Picks. All right, so we have now basically done the second most challenging thing in this uh, tutorial. I mean, this is super easy to do. The next thing we wanna do is actually go back to that last layer, copy maybe four or five of these, uh, shift D to duplicate, 
and make sure that they're somewhat even there. Move those to the first layer. All right, and uh, by the way, if you want to know how I'm doing that and how I'm bringing that up, that's M, and that'll let you move the layer. So if I press seven, ooh, that put it on layer seven. Let's go to layer seven, M, one, little blooper there. All right, what I'm gonna do is press seven on my numpad, and that's gonna put me in a top orthographic view. And uh, if you haven't figured out how to do that, you can just sort of hit view, and then um, top, and then orthographic. Um, I'm going to actually remove the group settings for these ones just mainly because that'll get a little annoying later on. And what I want to use these pictures for is just to size things up and see how the spacing is going to work. If I rotate those, 90 degrees, I can actually lay one on top of the other, and what it'll tell me is that um, I want to try to space out my images um, so that they're going to be about that far apart. This will come in handy. I don't know why I did extra ones there, that's, that's a little excessive. I can actually delete one of those. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is, uh, let's take this shot here, and I'm going to rotate it on the x-axis, but I'm gonna do it in the negative direction, negative 90. So if I go into edit mode, and that's tab, and bring up my properties, which are right here, and go down to the bottom, we're gonna see normals, and uh, press the face. All right, a little line's gonna pop up, and it's kind of hard to see, but if we boost that up, you'll see that the normals, so that's basically the, the top of the image, is facing upwards. And that's good for us. So tab. And I'm going to put this image right down so it's right next to this image here. And what I want to do is create a whole bunch of these uh, planes here. So that way, when I put a hair system into place, it will actually come out of the images. So I only need to use one image to do this, and actually I don't even need to use an image, I just need the plane. It just happens to have an image on it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna start with a modifier. So that modifier is going to be an array modifier, and press a little wrench, add modifier, and we're gonna choose array. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna give us an option to duplicate the, uh, the picture but a certain number of times. And I've done this a couple of times and I've found that with an Instagram frame, if you just press that little right arrow next to the X axis once, it spaces it out perfectly. So that'll do that one for me and I'll come back to that in just a moment. I'm gonna copy this array and this time around, what I'm gonna do is change it from relative offset to constant offset and I'm going to Make sure it goes in, I believe it's the Z axis. Yes. And one doesn't quite do it enough. I wanna do it so it just lines up with the bottom of that image there. So tweak a little bit there. And that will do it. So now anything else that I do is gonna sort of meet the dimensions that I need. Delete those pictures. And if I'm click down on my middle mouse button and drag a little bit, I can see that these pictures are nicely spaced so far. And I need to just bump up the number of, um, of planes that we're showing. So um, from the left to right, let's boost that to 10 or 12. Okay, I like that. And then uh, up and down, let's bump it up to 
seven. All right, uh, you can do more or less depending on how big you want your images to make, to be. I want to have a little bit of detail in there, so uh, this is more than enough for me. And uh, let's uh, line it up here a little bit. Okay, so now you have an option of uh, saving the uh, uh, this array setup. So that way, worst case scenario, you make a mistake, you can always come back to it. So Shift D, and that'll create a copy of that. And we're gonna move that to another layer, uh, right there. So now that I have this, these planes set up, uh, I want to apply the modifier. And I'm comfortable doing that because I already made a copy of my uh, original setup here. And if I wanna make more, you know, say for example, I wanna make this again and I wanna have more or less um, uh, planes to work with, I can bump it up or knock it down. So uh, back to the first plane there, we're gonna apply these modifiers. Apply and apply. If we try to go into edit mode, we got a lot of stuff to work with. And as we see, the normals are pointed up. Wonderful. So what we wanna do is create a hair system that will broadcast all the images from uh, this group. And uh, just to be forewarned, uh, because of there's so many images on the layer there, um, clicking back and forth a lot may cause it to crash, so kind of use it sparingly. Anyway, first one there. We're gonna go ahead and click on the particle system and add a new particle system, and we're gonna make sure instead of emitter, it is hair, and it's gonna create this big wild mess of hair. We don't need segments on this one here, uh, so bump that down. You can if you want, it doesn't make a difference if whether you do it or not. Uh, we're going to make sure we're set to advanced and we emit only from faces uh, and we want to make sure that randomness is turned off and we want to tell it that the maximum number of particles per face is going to be one if we set it to zero it'll just put out or put out whatever so one and uh, as far as the number you can make that as high as you want um, but um, based on how you change that it will it will change uh, how many are the order of the pictures that comes out so uh, i want to make that relatively low like 120 um, and that's a little bit of an arbitrary number there's no real um, motivation behind that particular number so the next thing we want to do is change these hairs to be pictures and under group let's go ahead and pick casey's group and you'll notice it brought in the pictures, but it put them in on a very strange angle. So let's fix that. Um, but before we do, actually, let's make sure that the render settings do not render out the emitter. And uh, the, let's see here. Yes, uh, the emitter object, uh, I found in the past, if we change the Y axis on the emitter, that seems to do it. There we go. And it only takes one little click to do that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a look at the pictures and make sure it put them out the right way. If not, we might just have to go in the opposite direction. So I think they're right. I'm just gonna try to find something that has some writing on it. Hmm. Ah, this is a good one. I know this picture here. All right, that's a picture of her with Tom Green. Hey, wait a minute. Isn't he the inspiration for this? Wow. <laughs> Actually, that was a night we, we went to see him in concert, and he was very funny, and I gave him that shirt, and the Belleville Bulls no longer exist. Um, anyway, the, the pictures are laid out exactly as I want them to be laid out. What I need to do is I need to adjust the sizes on them so that way they're not um, too tiny. So under physics, let's uh, actually under uh, velocity, we're gonna set the normals. 
and you can take it as far as you want just know that you know basically that's going to be blank space and um, if you want to take it you know all the way like that um, you can do that uh, in fact that'll be the groundwork for a good mosaic but if we bring it down so it's roughly the size of the original frame it looks like uh, like a, like a cool wall of Instagram photos um, and sort of meets what we originally set out to do. So what I want to do now is just make sure I'm in my top orthographic mode and drop the camera into place and you can do that by hitting control alt zero and let's grab the camera G to grab and in the Z axis if I pull out a little, well, a fair bit here, and then grab it and freely move it just enough there, it'll line up nicely. And I can go about this one of two ways. Um, I can crop the image right there, so that way it implies that the wall goes on forever. Or what I could do is I can grab it on the z-axis and pull it out a little bit more and just sort of you know, set that as the edge, which to be honest with you, I'm gonna do that this time around. You have a little bit of freedom here. I mean, this is your art, so, you know, do, do it with it as you please. What I do notice here a little bit is there are a couple of images being duplicated. So um, I noticed we got this shot here seems to be duplicated here. If I go back to my particle and change the numbers, it'll randomize the images again. And if you go too low, you're gonna find that particles are gonna start disappearing. And that's just because it doesn't have enough particles to make up for the number of faces it has. So let's bump this up a little bit more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, and is that random enough? Well, I can't tell. Looks fine. All right, so uh, once again, let's just double check our settings before we do a render. And let's see there, 100%. Um, our world is set to black. And under post-processing, we have an edge with one uh, pixel of thickness and it's white. So let's do a render. And there we go. That looks super cool. So um, I suppose now you have this, it's done. What can you do with it? I don't know, do it with it, whatever you want. Send it to your friends, I don't know. Um, if you got a whole bunch of family Polaroids or something like that, you can scan them and do this the same way. What becomes important now is to identify that at a moment's notice, I can change this. All right, so first let's go ahead and save this one because it's actually pretty cool. Save as image. All right. And uh, now I want to make one for myself. So, uh, Let's bring up Instagram again, and if we go to my or my uh, my YouTube channel's Instagram account, you'll notice I don't have enough to do this. I mean, that's going to be a boring photo wall because I just haven't really put as much on there. That will get better over time. In fact, I'll put up uh, this display. But if I go to my personal one, you know, I got a lot more to work with. And yeah, I'm one of those guys who I usually put up just a lot of pictures of my kids. I am exceptionally boring when it comes to Instagram. Uh, I'm going to use the term Kathy Lee when it comes to uh, me and my kids. I talk about them a lot. So, uh, gosh darn it, that means that the theme on this one is my kids and my stuff. I'm going to save as, and I've already done this one here. So I'm basically just going to save my pro, I've already saved my profile there, and I know where the pictures are. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Blender again, and this time around I'm going to pick a new layer, 
that one's there is fine. And what I'm going to do is import more pictures. File, import, images as planes. And basically just select all the pictures I use. Again, making sure they're shadeless. And again, you want to step back from this because sometimes if you do too much fooling around, they will crash. Uh, this is a pretty decent laptop that I work on, but uh, if I was make, be working with an older one, this wouldn't quite work out so well. So you might have to do two or three imports. Um, so there we go, they're all imported now, and I'm going to create a new group. And I'm going to change this from Casey's picks to Adam's picks. And once that is done, now this is the great part. If I want to uh, make a new profile, or sorry, a new, a new wall, all I have to do is select that very first layer there. click on the wall and then change the emitter to a new group from Casey's picks to Adam's picks and now it's just shameless pictures of my kids and some stuff oh hey there's me uh, at work um, the bent bit uh, anyway hey look there's me with John Waters the famous director of pink flamingos and hairspray uh, anyway, that looks really cool. And a quick render. Voila. All right, and that looks really cool. So you can go ahead and do this. And if you have a whole bunch of friends, you go ahead and do it again. And uh, say, for example, you're really good at formatting your pictures into just square images and you're at something like a, uh, a wedding or something like that. These make cool little gifts. So anyway, that is it. And uh, I hope this gives you good ideas. The goal is uh, to uh, expand this. Try something different. If you can make these all uh, um, video images, you got something else to work with there too. So I highly, highly suggest you try this at home and, uh, and, and do enjoy. So uh, for... Uh, Follow me on uh, YouTube at uh, the FX Kid, and um, you can follow me on my other social media platforms. I believe I'm on Twitter. Oh, I'm recording tutorials. Let me tweet again. How do I tweet? I suck at Twitter. Home. Hmm. Just finished a great tutorial. All right. And you can also find me on uh, Instagram at the FX Kid. And uh, if you have any questions drop me a comment below please 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 like this video because uh that uh, validates my entire day anyway have a great day and thank you very much for using the services you're a big bad bag of awesome and it's not that you're big and it's not that you're bad and it's not that you're a bag it's just that you're awesome